In this video we're going to continue our look at analysing data from I2C sensors and we're going to carry on with the, the light sensor. We've covered how to, to use this Python shell node in a previous video. So what we're going to look at now is how we can split this string or string array into numbers that we can start using for visualization and then push into other platforms like InfluxDB. Now we've got to be careful, we're getting the data quite nicely here, we're getting it every transmission, but if something goes wrong with the link between Python and Node-RED, we may get these being joined together in one string. So what we'll get, if we use this example here, we'll get, we'll get the inverted commas, 49 point whatever, then we've got a space, then we've got 865 and then we've got a carriage return. If it joins, before we close the, uh, the inverted commas, we will have another value and then another return and it will just keep adding those up. So we've got to split those first and luckily there's a, a common function node to, to do that. The node we're going to use is this split node, which is um, installed by default, I believe, on Node-RED. If we drag this in, we'll have a look at how to, to split this, this message here. Now, we might not see it doing anything at the moment, because none of my messages are actually creating what I'm going to class as a double or treble string array. Let's put it in there as a matter of caution, just in case it happens. So we'll join it to the output and then carriage return which we've got here at the end is symbolized by using a backslash n and you can see here split string using backslash n will handle it as a as a stream of messages and we are going to have a fixed length of one so we'll put a debug on here so we can see what's happening so let's have a look at what we've got so here now I have my string coming in and I've put it into this split and now I have a message payload with individual string and I've lost the carriage return. Yeah. So what we need to do now is split this again uh, into two separate values and we're going to use the space as our symbol. Before we add the, uh, the second split which we're going to split these into two individual values just to uh, reiterate what we've done here. This is potentially a stream of messages coming in. So as I've already alluded to, we could have one big string array. The next split, we've already split that into individual messages. So that, that's the difference that, that we're looking at. So we'll, get, we'll add another sp split in and we'll join it. But this time, we're using a space and we're not handling as a stream of messages because we've already split them into individual messages. We're just now splitting these two values. We're, we're, again, we're having a, a split length, um, a fixed length of one. And we'll click done on that. If I deploy this now, let's wait for the script to start. What we'll see now is we've got two payloads here but with no real identification. So this is what we've got to add next. We've got to use some JavaScript and some clever manipulating of these two values to give these individual topic names to make it easier to, to push them around our code. So we've added the two splits. I hope that makes sense. We've got one with a um, that's handling a stream of messages, and the second one is an, is is looking at each individual message as it as it comes in, and you can't see it on here, but we're splitting it with a, with a space. So let's have a look at the the message payload that we that we've got here now. So we've got two process values, and then we have this parts section, and in here, look, you can see the character that I'm using to split. It's a type string. And then we've got a count 
of 2 because there's two process values and then we've got an index of 0 and an index of 1 and this is the clever bit that we're going to use to generate two message topics that are going to be labelled up as light 0 and light 1. I'm going to use the change node now to build up my two message topics. So if I join that I'm going to set the message topic then I'm going to use a Java expression and it's going to be light. This is going to be the first part of my message topic name. So this is a string and then we're going to add. So we've got and and then we're going to have parts which is here look dot index. So my message is going to be light and parts index so I'll have one called light one and I'll have another one called light zero and if I want to put a space in there I can so let's put a, a space in at the end of light it will wait for the Python code to start so it's processing data now let's have a look at what we've got we should have a message topic here can you see my message topic called light zero and then I have another message topic called light one. And so that that now gives me the, the functionality to, to split these off into separate messages. So that's nice and easy to do. So to split these into to, to two um, message topics that make more sense. And what I mean by make sense is rather than it saying light zero and light one, these actually need to be labelled up correct, correctly in accordance with the manual for the actual sensor I've got. So light zero is just the light and the manual then says that the second process value is the ambient light. Okay? So I'm going to split these and give them the correct topic names and we'll do that using the switch. Bring this in and then we're going to look at the, the message topic. And if the message topic equals light zero, so I'm hoping I can do control C, control V, I'll get that out on output number one. And then my second output is light one. So this is now going to give me two separate outputs. And then I can use the, the change node to set the individual message topics. So I'll link these up. I've got two outputs. This one here, set message topic to light. And then this one, we're going to set the message topic to ambient. I've deployed this now, and we're just going to focus on each one of these. I, I should label these up properly, but I've been rushing. Have a look at this first debug. You can see here now this one is called light with the correct reference. And then this one here is called ambient. And what I can do now is I can use those uh, readily within my, my uh, flows. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'll just delete those. Let's be a bit clever here and we'll visualize this with a gauge. Let's put that in as a level gauge for now. It doesn't really matter. I'm not bothered about the units and we'll deploy that just to show this finished off. So if we want to see the dashboard, we go to dashboard and then we click on this little symbol here and we can see our, see it's saying units because I haven't physically typed, typed them in. But if I put my hand over this now, I can see the light is deteriorating and I will use my mobile phone torch to prove these values get higher um, when uh, a torch is shined on them. So that's it. So we've used, just to recap, let's go through the flow. We've used a split at the end to split um, a stream of messages that will have carriage return. Then we've got two individual values coming in. So if we use the debug to help us through this, we've got two individual values coming in with a carriage return. We've got rid of the carriage return. Then we need to um, split that into two individual values, which we can see here now. I've got two individual values, 
and then we're being clever with the change node using a little bit of JavaScript, very simple to, to look at these index values to create two message topics that I am then putting into a switch node and I have um, I'm looking for the, the light 0 and light 1 which I've created with this change node splitting that into two other change nodes to set the message topic to, to something that ties in with the manual but I could also now push this into global memory area if I wanted to and then I'm then using the gauge to, to visualize it so there you have it how you can split a repeating string array you know, the format needs to be the same all of the time if you all of a sudden you have three values rather than two and this is going to struggle but my format is set the same for this particular sensor really tricky to get your head around splitting string arrays so I hope you found that useful as per usual click on the notification button because plenty more videos like this coming out but for now thanks for listening and hope to see you again soon